Hey guys, today I'm going to go over troubleshooting and replacing a start capacitor on a single phase capacitive start motor. Now these are really, really common in both residential and light industrial applications and they're found in all kinds of equipment. Uh, pool pumps, spa pumps, uh, air compressors, table saws, band saws, grinders. There's a whole host of machinery that uses this style of motor. Now, a lot of times what happens when one of these motors fails to start, you run into difficulty attempting to locate a replacement motor, and sometimes it's so impractical that you end up having to replace the entire piece of equipment. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit of diagnostics that you can do to your single phase motor here that uh, could save you a lot of trouble and a lot of money just by looking at the start circuit on these. Now, Across the board, these come from about a third horse all the way up through five or six horsepower, and they're all the same basic design. They have two parts to their start circuit. There's a centrifugal switch, which will be mounted internally on the shaft, as well as a capacitor or a set of start capacitors that gets the motor up and running. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do when we've got a motor that won't start is do a visual inspection. Um, you want to make sure the shaft turns freely. It's not locked up. You want to check to make sure that when the motor failed to start, there was no smoke that came out of it, no sparks didn't trip the breaker, or if it did, you know, the wires didn't melt or anything like that. Any of those could indicate a more serious problem. Now, if all of that's still good, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop the cover off the capacitor here and check it out. Now, when you pop this cover off, the first thing you're going to want to do is a visual inspection of the capacitor. Most of the time when these fail, it'll be fairly evident. The top will have popped off the capacitor, they'll have spewed their guts all over, sometimes there'll be char marks on here, sometimes there's a little safety vent that'll be popped out or bulged, uh, that's a good indication. Um, a smell like burning or uh, sometimes like an antifreeze smell from these can often indicate a failure. Um, and then of course when in doubt we can always verify with a multimeter uh, whether or not the capacitance is good on these. So I'm going to go ahead, this one doesn't have any obvious signs of failure on it, but since the motor wouldn't start, I'm going to go ahead and remove the terminals here real quick so that I separate the capacitor from the motor. And the first thing I'm going to check actually is to check to see if the speed switch is engaged. Now, usually what these are is this a normally closed switch, which means when the motor is off, the switch should be closed, which would be keeping the capacitor in the circuit. So I can take my meter and I set it to continuity so it'll beep when there's a complete circuit. And I just test across these two leads here. So I get good continuity across there, which means the switch is closed. Now, usually if the switch is stuck open, the motor won't start because this capacitor is essentially not in the circuit. Now, if the switch is stuck closed, the motor will start, but you'll hear a grinding or a humming sound, and then that's not the case. In that case, you probably want to suspect your speed switch. But in this case, the continuity checks out good, and we're going to go ahead and turn our attention to the capacitor here. Now, on the top of these capacitors, there is usually soldered a bleed down resistor. And the purpose of this is to bleed down any excess energy that gets stuck in the capacitor once the, the motor comes up to speed. And and it's pulled out of the circuit. You don't want this thing holding on to any DC charge. So that resistor there will bleed off that extra electricity. Um, and when you purchase your new capacitor, in addition to getting the ratings on the capacitor right, you're also going to need to replace that resistor. Uh, if it's still in good shape from your old capacitor, you can often transfer it to your new one. Um, or if you can look at the color bands on the resistor, you can often tell what value the resistor is and just purchase another one to solder onto your new capacitor. Now, to test the capacitance of this guy here, we have to take that resistor out of the circuit because it's going to mess with the way the meter reads capacitance. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and set our meter to capacitance and just take our probes and measure right across the terminals of the capacitor there. Now, what you're going to want to do is check to make sure that the reading you get on the screen falls within the range that's marked on the capacitor. So for example, this one here says 216 to 259 microfarads. 
And we're out of range on that one, so this capacitor is indeed bad. It's, it's reading way too low. So we're going to have to go ahead and replace it. Now Temco offers a huge variety of replacement capacitors, uh, both start and run capacitors. Now this is an important differentiation, and I'm going to go ahead and post up another video that's going to detail the difference between what a motor start capacitor and what a motor run capacitor is. So the microfarads that I was talking about earlier, 216 to 259 on this motor, you want to get a replacement that has that same rating on it. This one's 110 slash 127 volts, so we have a direct replacement here. As long as it fits under the cover on your motor, this won't provide a problem because electrically they're the same inside. So now what we need to do is go ahead and transfer that resistor we took off of this one to our new start capacitor here. We're going to go ahead and wire this in just by clipping the leads on where they were before on the old capacitor like as such. Replace the cover, just screwing it back on. Make sure those are nice and tight so it doesn't rattle. And then now when we apply power to the motor, it starts right up. So that was the problem. If you have any questions on replacing a start capacitor or anything I haven't covered in this video, you can post a comment below or give us a call. It's area code 510-403-4061. And uh, we'll be happy to help you sizing that out. You can also click down in the description there. We'll have a link to our sizing guide, which will help you choose the right capacitor for your application. You can also now like us on Facebook. It's under Temco Industrial Power. So make sure you like us, leave us comments, like, subscribe, etc. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.